dear Margot. They finally released me from the hospital. And now I'm home again. But, in a way, I almost wish I had died in there. Would have been easier, perhaps. When I think what happened to Nick. And well... I look from my window and, and see all the rest of the gang having fun. All having fun. But I, I've had my last date. Who would want to go off with me now? Not even Larry. Some of the fault was mine, I, I know. And yet, it all started so early. The day of the big football game. Anderson Belhar was playing the Mozart team that day. And both Larry and Nick were wonderful. Nick made two touchdowns himself. Oh, it was terribly exciting. But then after the game when Kathy Robbins, she's my best friend, and I were waiting outside the stadium dressing room for Nick and Larry, she made me think a little by something she said. Oh, wasn't he wonderful, Kathy? Who, Nick? Oh, yes, he's quite a flash. But did you notice who ran interference for him? Larry, your other boyfriend, remember? He did. Oh, of course, I should have known. But they're both so... Well, it's a problem to decide which one I like the best. Gee, I wish I had that kind of a problem. Oh. Which one of them are you going to let take you home, Jeannie? Oh, I don't know. I haven't decided. Of course, Nick has a hot rod car his father gave him last week. Sure is snazzy. Yes, but the way he drives. Nick's a good driver. Why, his own father showed him how. Of course, he may be a little reckless, but... Well, I wouldn't ride with him for all the tea in China. Tea doesn't come from China, silly. It comes from Ceylon or somewhere. Yes. I was rather sure of myself that day. It was wonderful to have my choice between the two most popular boys in school. And then, Larry and Nick came out. Hi, Millie, and I was faced with a decision. That Which would I let I take me home? <laughs> I like them both about the same. How'd you like the game, Jeannie? Oh, it was super, Nick. You were wonderful. Especially behind the interference you had. Well, don't think I don't appreciate it. Larry here did a swell job of mowing them down. <laughs> they weren't too tough. Well, from where we sat, it looked as though you were opening up holes big enough to drive a truck through. Hey, that reminds me. How would you all like to take a ride in my new monster? My dad gave it to me last week. Really a souped-up hot rod. Do better than 90 without even half trying. Oh, I'd love that. But, Jean, I thought we'd... Well, that is... I thought we were going to... Well, anyway, I can't join you. I have the family car here, and I have to take it home. You better count me out, too. I've had one ride with this candidate for Tina size. I don't think I could stand another one. Candidate for what? Tina size. Don't you ever listen to Dan Bacon, the disc jockey on the radio? He talks about it all the time. He calls it the fine art of killing yourself before you're 20. You do it with an automobile. He says all you have to do is treat everyone else on the road like an unwanted relative or a mother-in-law. Forget all you've ever learned about being polite and considerate to others, and you'll make it. That's what the man says, and I believe him. Come on, Larry, take me home, huh? So long, kids. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Now, what do you suppose got into her? Tina side. That's a lot of nonsense. Besides, my old man taught me how to drive. Got to see the way he can wheel a car around. Never had an accident yet. He's only been arrested three times. Oh, beautiful. Shall we be off into the wild blue yonder? Come on, I'll give you a real ride. It was a real ride, all right. We went the long way out along the turnpike, and we went fast.
By the time we got to my house, I was windblown and almost exhausted because the way Nick drove was, well, pretty frightening. Still, it was thrilling, too. Nick wanted a date for that evening to go dancing at the lake, but I turned him down. Somehow, I felt uneasy about riding with him at night. He didn't take it very well. He was angry as he went away. And then, as I started into the house, I got a big surprise. Harry was sitting on our porch swing waiting for me. What in the world are you doing here? I had to talk to you, Jean. And, well, your mother said I could wait for you and then stay for dinner. Where have you been? Nick and I took the long way home. He's a terrific driver. I see. Sit down for a minute. All right. No. What was it that you wanted to talk to me about that's so important? Well, look, you remember what Kathy told us about Tina side this afternoon? Yes, I remember. Nick thought it was pretty silly. Yes, I expected he would. And that's what I want to talk to you about. Jean, I wish you wouldn't ride in that hot rod of Nick's. I mean, the way he drives, it's dangerous. Now, it's... just a minute, Mr. Larry Gray. I think you're jealous, that's all. How possessive can a man be? You don't own me. No, I don't. But I hope to someday. And I want you all in one piece. Look, I'm not a square or a killjoy. You know that. And if I wanted to, I could drive faster and crazier than Nick or any other hot rod guy in the world. But it's plain stupid for my money to risk your own life and the lives of a lot of other people just to show off the fact that you can operate a car. Any kid can drive an automobile. What's so special about it? I'm sorry. It's, it's just that... I like you so much that I don't want anything to happen to you. All right, children. Dinner's ready. But I was really touched by Larry's concern about me. And more than that, I had another feeling. He was sweet. So, after dinner, Larry went home to change his clothes. I had agreed to go with him to the lake for a few dances at the casino. I put on my prettiest dress. Oh, it was a lovely evening. And somehow, Larry looked awfully handsome. More so than I'd ever seen him before. Oh, it was nice to know someone cared so much about me. It certainly was a lot different riding with Larry than it had been with Nick. like a slow pole. You ought to take lessons from Nick. He really goes. Yeah, I know. I've seen him. Oh, hurry up. You can beat that red light. Maybe. But maybe somebody else on the side street is trying to beat it, too. you pass that car ahead of us? Because, darling, I don't want to go over the speed limit. Oh, for goodness sakes, we'll never get to the lake at this rate. It's my music, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Going to be a nice night, too. Moon and everything. And now we bring you that man who spins platters while he chins and chatters, Dan Bacon. Good evening, Hey, that's the disc jockey Dan Kathy was talking Bacon. about this afternoon. Without the eggs, I hope. <laughs> and I've got a lot of select to twist tonight. But before we start, I want a word with any of you teenage ladies and gentlemen who may be listening. You're all such nice kids. But tell me, are you still alive? You are? Good. Then you haven't committed teenicide yet, have you? What is tenocide? Well, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Tenocide, the fine art of killing yourself and maybe somebody else before you reach the age of 20. 
you do it with an automobile. It's easy, really. All you have to do... He's corny. Besides, I think you knew he was going to tell you deliberately. Oh, I'm sick and tired of hearing about this teen aside thing. Hurry up, will you? The dance will be over before we get there. But Larry didn't hurry. He stayed strictly within the speed limit. Oh, I suppose I was pretty unreasonable about the whole thing. But to me then, it seemed like much ado about nothing at all. When we got to the Lake Casino, I stopped being mad. Hearing the music, I wanted to dance and have fun. Glad we had gone there. Mm, he was a darling. He even tried to kiss you while we were dancing. But suddenly, I opened my eyes and there was Nick. Pardon me, may I cut in? Nick. Oh, hi, Nick. Didn't expect to see you here. Oh, I expect you didn't. May I have a dance with your girl? Well, sure, if she's willing. But just one dance, mister. That's all I want. One dance. Nick was curious with me. Why had I refused to date with him and then gone out with Larry? I didn't have any excuse. But his attitude made me miserable. The whole evening was spoiled. After a while, though, he got over his mat a little and, and finally we made up. And all was forgiven. Come and take a little ride around the lake? Oh, I couldn't do that. Larry's waiting to dance with me. He's over there talking to a bunch of the guys on the team. It'll only take about 10 minutes and he'll never even miss you. Mm -hmm. Preparation for having gone out with Larry instead of him. And on and him plus I agreed to take a short ride. Not more than 15 minutes. Not more than 15 minutes. this afternoon, Nikki. What's the matter? You've been listening to 12 years old. Like I told you before, taught me all the tricks. Be careful, Nick. Don't worry, there's nothing to it. Watch this. Just give him the horn and make him get out of the way. Well, there wasn't any doubt that Nick knew how to handle a car. But I couldn't help remembering something. Penicide is the fine art of killing yourself and maybe somebody else before you reach the age of... You do it with an automobile. It's easy, really. Do you have to take photos on two wheels? Why not? Two wheels are better than none. That's what my old man always says. Please, Nikki. It's the second red light you run. Oh, those things are for old women and scaredy cats. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> in a hurry on this baby walk around them. Penis 
suicide is the fine art of killing yourself and maybe somebody else before you reach the age of 20. You do it with an automobile. Tina side. 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 Bad blasted truck. So you see, it would have been better if I had died in the hospital than to look the way I do. I couldn't even go to Nick's funeral. Or the funerals of all those people in the other car. And I, as I said before, I've had my life.